let's get into some headlines. <clears throat> um, this is out of Australia, and I saw this on a post on Twitter from Environmental Coffee House asking if this was true. Apparently, it is true. Australia to cull thousands of camels. And this is from yesterday. Thousands of camels in the South Australia will be shot dead from helicopters as a result of extreme heat and drought. A five-day coal started on Wednesday as Aboriginal communities in the region have reported large groups of camels damaging towns and buildings. They are ro roaming the streets looking for water. We are worried about the safety of the young children, says Marita Baker, who lives in the community of uh, Kanipi. Some feral horses will also be killed. This is a true story. Um, again, can the news get any worse than what is coming out of Australia? It seems like every single day. Um, some new disastrous uh, something is happening. Um, Animals dying, mammals dying, species dying, animals having to be killed, drought, fires, floods. Uh, also hearing reports out of Australia that the economy seems to be tanking as well. So that, you know, they are getting it from all sides. Uh, another headline out of Australia, Australia bushfires, smoke drifts as far as south america skies have already turned bright orange over auckland in new zealand as wildfires continue to ravage australia killing 24 so far this is from tuesday january 7th smoke from wildfires in australia is drifting across the pacific to cities in south america and may have reached the antarctic the un world meteorological organization has said at the weekend, skies turned apocalyptic bright orange 1,300 miles away in Auckland, New Zealand as push, bushfires continue to uh, wreak destruction in Australia where so far 24 people have been killed. Now skies as far as 7,000 miles away in Chile have gone gray in the thick smoke. <clears throat> uh, the sunset in Argentina's capital, Buenos Aires, has turned red from the smoke. Uh, the news just keeps on, keeps on coming. Going south says Australia going down the drain, or going going south as it were. But I'm bumped. <clears throat> Leslie Wheeler says south of Perth has a new bushfire. Human asks, are we at war with Eurasia or East Asia? We have always been at war with terrorists. Uh, no, now we're at war with Russia. We have always been at war with Russia. <clears throat> sea levels may rise quicker due to Australian fires, says Going South. Ryan Ferrix, greetings from Washington State. D Dana Patterson from BC, Canada. What's up, guys? Uh, another interesting headline from The Guardian. This is from George Monbiot. I don't know if anybody saw this. The headline of this article uh, that came out yesterday is uh, says lab grown food will soon destroy farming and save the planet. Scientists are replacing crops and livestock with food made from microbes and water. It may save humanity's bacon. What y'all think about this? It sounds like a miracle, but no great technological leaps were required in a commercial lab on the outskirts of Helsinki. You know what? Maybe I'm going to come back in and uh, read this. It's a, it's a rather long article. Maybe, maybe I'll come back and read this in <clears throat> greater
greater depth. But I'm going to move on to this other headline. Zimbabwe drought. UN warns food. I got this from uh, Nick Humphrey's site, uh, Facebook page. Zimbabwe drought. UN warns food will run out by the end of February. There will be no relief for Zimbabwe in 2020. It seems the UN have painted a bleak picture of the year ahead as the country braces for food shortages. Around half a dozen, uh, half of all citizens in Zimbabwe are facing another grim reality of 2020. The United Nations have warned that their food reserves, which go towards feeding millions of people in that country, will be gone by next month. Uh, so this is something that has been talked about pretty wild, uh, widely, and not wildly, but widely, uh, in the last year, as there have been a lot of flooding, uh, there's been a lot of flooding going on globally, uh, and the talk has been about impacting uh, food supplies in the coming year. Um, so far, we haven't seen really that happen in the United States or any other Western nations, but in Africa, of course, where the food supply is not as, you know, uh, steady as, uh, as, as, as it were, um, they're feeling some shocks, uh, from past events. United Nations have warned that their food reserves, which go towards feeding millions of people in the country will be gone by next month. The startling claim comes as experts shared a horrific Forecast: Our neighbors to the north are facing another dry, unforgiving season that threatens everything on the production line. From livestock's, livestock's crops, planted seeds have failed to germinate, and 2019's maize is down 50% on 2018's haul. Uh, and another commenter just said something about, um, I believe it was, Mexico or another country in South America that the farmers are seeing much fewer seeds uh, in their crops. So the, the actual seeds with, which they use to replant their next crop, the seeds themselves are down because of drought or of whatever weather, um, cli- you know, climate change uh, is affecting the, the plant's uh, growth cycles. This is not this is not good. This is very scary. Um, so Zimbabwe being a place that may be seeing um, you know the end result of um, extreme weather or climate change uh, affecting crops, crop losses, then then affecting the availability of food for its citizens. TCR Galaxy says, save the bacon by allowing billions more humans to be grown. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You know, the whole growing food in lab thing, I mean, that sounds straight up out of Blade Runner. Um, If anybody saw the the sequel to Blade Runner, I think it's 2049, basically humanity continues because they're able to grow food um, in in labs, in laboratory settings. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, traditional food is not farmed anymore. It is made or grown in labs. We are entering, um, officially a sci-fi, <laughs> a sci-fi existence. Going South says bacon is slang for cops, right? 19th century douchebag says we've known this is coming we've known this is coming yes Uh, the dude says camel culling is to prevent them from drinking up storage ponds at rural farms and such question yeah well what uh, apparently it's they're affecting um indigenous populations and they're like wandering into towns and trying to get food and water um, and camels can be pretty scary and aggressive <laughs> if they're 
just wild, you know. Um, and so, you know, they're they're threatening the populations there, and that's why they're calling them. 19th century douchebag says, yummy, yummy lab lobster. Zoxalix asks, how much energy does it take to grow this meat in a lab? Well, uh, is it meat, meat lab? Lab meat? I don't know. We'll, we'll go back and I'll go back and get in depth of that story and we'll find out exactly what it is. Zoxalix says, plan B is just to eat us. Soylent Green is people. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe um, lab-grown food is the future. I mean, it's clear that if we can't grow food the regular way in, anymore, if climate change has made growing food, you know, traditionally by farming on land, uh, you know, other things are going to have to come in place, or we are all going to be Zimbabwe very, very soon. Um, you know, the, the options are grow food in a lab or grow food underground or grow food indoors where you can control the climate. I mean, that's just, that's just straight up reality. That's what, what it's going to be. That's what we're going to be resorting to because um, as farmers around the world know, uh, it's become a guessing game. Um, Roger Hallam, you know, one of the founders of Extinction Rebellion is a, was an organic farmer and had his business and his crops destroyed by climate change. He can no longer run his organic farming business because of climate change. Plenty of other farmers around the world are realizing this reality. Uh, Basil Peterson says most good sci-fi is usually prescient, i.e. Soylent Green. <clears throat> C.B. Unglesby says onion, now no longer exported from Greece and Turkey because of shortage. Um, <laughs> Going South says 3D print food. Delicious. Delicious. Um... <coughs> Uh, Ecotopian Emissary says, aren't craft singles made of plastic? Uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to find alternatives to our traditional food growing and gathering methods real soon. Uh, because, it, you know, this will, this will become a problem worldwide. Zimbabwe is just a harbinger of what we will be seeing in other countries. Uh, you know, already Europe has certain vegetable shortages, um, some food sh shortages. I don't know what's going on in China or in the East as far as that goes, but um, on, in small numbers, it's happening in Europe. Uh, most likely going to start happening in, the, in North America as well. I don't have any information on South America. If anybody has any information on that, would love to hear it. Mustafa Agai says, then World War III is around the corner after all. Anthony Davis, hello. Osama, hello. So let's uh, move on. Osama says we hit 25 degrees last night. <clears throat> yeah, and you guys are going to be up in the 70s again, like this weekend, which is a little bit early, considering it's January, right? Um, high of 48 in Chicago today. Human says growing crickets in basement. Yep. Get ready for some cricket tacos. Cricket tacos, anyone? <clears throat> yeah, Ecotopian uh, Emissary, yeah, uh, usually in Chicago around this time of year. I've been in Chicago many times around this time of year, and it's, yeah, it's like 20 degrees, 25. Not 50. 50 is spring weather. 
Uh, Prudhon, hello. Uh, Basil Peterson says, here in the Finger Lakes, we had a blizzard yesterday, minus 15 wind chills. Tomorrow is predicted to be 40 with rain. Roller coaster here. <clears throat> hmm. Zoxalix says, give me some insect flour. Yummy. Um, that's what I got for climate change headlines. Uh, let's move into some news adjacents. <clears throat> Y'all hear about this Ukraine plane crash? Not due to engine failure. Iran refuses to hand over black boxes to Boeing. So apparently this plane crash in Iran is Ukrainian. Why is why do the same names keep coming up in world events? It's really strange. <clears throat> um, and there's some conspiracy stuff around this, but I'm not going to go into that. But anyways, Iran, Ukraine, Syria, North Korea, you, you hear the same. It's like everything happens in these four countries all the time. Um, that's where all, all world news events happen. <clears throat> um, and it's a little bit strange to me. Uh, but anyways, that is a weird story. Apparently this plane crashed due to technical problems, but there's a lot of mysteriousness around this. Uh, moving on to another headline, Trump opts not to escalate Iran conflict announces new sanctions. If anybody was watching, you know, his crazy lunatic, uh, speech that was all over the place and full of, full of, um, gaslighting, but. At the very end of his speech, he was like, well, let's have some peace. <laughs> so apparently there was no escalation after Iran, Iran um, shot some missiles at U.S. bases but didn't hit anybody. Apparently Iran tipped off Iraq about these airstrikes and then Iraq tipped off the U.S. about these airstrikes or these missile strikes. Um, and... I, you know, it's a weird story because this all seems very calculated. Somebody left a comment yesterday about the fact that the Iranian airstrikes seem to be co like super coordinated as to not hit anybody or hurt anybody. Um, and that seem, it, you know, it seems to be very true that this was, oh, we have to, you know, do something to save face, but we don't want to escalate this further. Um, so, you know deep breath and cross fingers that we are not heading into further escalation in Iran. Anthropomorphic facsimile says you never hear about Luxembourg anymore. Yep. I know, you know, <laughs> Luxembourg used to be the center of everything and now nothing. Um, Zoxalix says maybe Iran shot it down on purpose. They are the axis of evil. Of right, exactly. The axis of the, and that's what I'm trying to say. The axis of evil. It's always like these same places where Okay, so look, this is not what I think, so please people don't fr freak out because I'm going to say this. There there are some people that believe that these places like North Korea and Iran um and to some extent, Syria are run by the CIA, that basically the CIA controls what is going on in these places, that they foment the discord, you know, they, they basically phone and Ukraine, you could add to the list, right? It's a CIA run. These entire countries are basically directed by the CIA, the CIA, they make things happen in these countries. And in, you know, every, the whole world is like, oh my God, what are we going to do? They man, they help in the whole, um, the whole thrust of manufacturing consent, right? That's just a theory. That's not my theory. I'm just, you know, saying that some people have put this out there. So it's very, you know, when you start looking at things that happen around the world that we, you know, we never really go to war with North Korea or Iran or, you know, really go to war with Ukraine or Syria or Russia or anybody, 
I'm not saying Russia is CIA controlled, but who knows? Um, you know, it, it it's it's plausible. I don't know if it's likely. Anyways, putting that out there that that this is a this is a theory that some people have put forth and believe, and it's an interesting one to me. That's all I'm going to say about it. <clears throat> but again, uh, this whole thing that's been happening with Iran is basically, you know, um, somebody does something right. You know, supposedly Iran shoots rockets into Saudi Arabia. And what happened was the Houthi rebels had claimed responsibility for that. But we blame it on Iran and we say, see, look how they're escalating things. Now we got to do something, right? So it's all, uh, you know, it's all false flags and funny business, right? Right. Osama says they are, they are trying to blame the, plash, the plane crash on Iran. But is Iran really to blame? <laughs> nobody knows. Nobody can, nobody can tell what's going on. Um, yeah, so, you know, whatever. I'm just putting that out there. I'm not saying that's what I believe. I'm not saying that's true. <clears throat> um, and I would like to talk about this further in another video, but not, maybe not today. <clears throat> but the thing is, it's, it's, it's interesting. So there was, there was this whole idea that, um, there's whole news story about the fact that Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Iraq were on the verge of um, forming some kind of agreement uh, to um, protect their oil wealth and to kind of, you know, foster peace among the nations. And then we go in there and um, kill Soleimani and disrupt basically all. Uh, we, di we disrupt the peace and then, you know, kind of like uh, foment this whole thing that's going on. And now everybody's scared shitless and everybody you know the whole news media apparatus is like you know oh my god we've got to be on alert and what are we going to do and iran or you know they're they're aggressive they're hostile um we got to be you know prepare the troops and get ready for world war three and all this stuff um again this hypes up the military military industrial complex and you know gives everybody a reason to be you know prepared on alert that gives a reason for the military to exist but we don't really want to go full-scale war um and it has has been evidenced by the fact that you know nothing's happening now iran's not gonna uh escalate we're not gonna escalate we're all just gonna be like okay you know we're gonna do sanctions or whatever that's what trump said um Anyways, this this just keeps the, you know, the war games, you know, going. <laughs> Those weapons of mass destruction have to be around here somewhere, said George W. Bush. David Cardell says they never need to control anything anywhere. All they need to do is control the news from these places, which they do. <coughs> That's absolutely true. And that is, you know, a part of the manufacturing consent for everything that, that we think and believe in order to support this endless war. To support, you know, reasons for us to have 20, 30, 40, 50 military bases all over the Middle East and, <laughs> you know, continue to continue to fund uh, these war games and that's all they are is war games Osama says weapons contractors profits through the roof exactly uh, Basil thank you for the super chat I appreciate you namaste brothers and sisters the first victim of war is the truth uh, Ashelis I think I'm am I pronouncing that correctly Ashelis 500 BC Anthony Davis says, bottom line, America wants that oil. So there was another story that, there was another story, This is, check this out, that Trump baited Soleimani 
into being outside of Iran. He baited him into being in Iraq. That Trump asked Soleimani to be the go-between in this peace accord between Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq. Soleimani went into Iraq, and then they killed him. That's another wild story, if that's true. Anybody heard that one? I don't know. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> to move on to something adjacent of that story, it's about to get weirder, guys. <laughs> um, one of Trump's most vocal critics on Iran is Fox News's Tucker Carlson. And there was a story on the Hill today about the possibility that Tucker Carlson talked basically uh, goaded Trump into de-escalating the situation. Um, which happened the last time that Trump was about to strike Iran with a, with a rocket strike. And basically, Tucker Carlson talked him out of, out of it, was the news story. Uh, over the past week, Tucker Carlson has used his namesake show to criticize Trump, his military leaders, and high-ranking foreign policy officials for their decision to strike. On Friday, the conservative pundit criticized chess beaters for making the usual warlike noises. On Monday, he questioned why conservatives, who were long suspicious of the military and intelligence community, were suddenly trusting them on Iran. So I, I don't like Tr Tucker Carlson uh, at all. I think he's... <laughs> um, he's, you know, all that's wrong with a lot of the news and a lot of the commentary and obviously you know he's extremely right wing and he's a um he's racist he's you know uh he does a lot of uh, you know baiting race baiting for you know on immigrants and a lot of other people he's not you know he's just an asshole is what i'm trying to say but oddly he has this anti-war stance which is why he has Tulsi Gabbard on his show all the time. But he has a, an extremely anti-war stance and an anti-regime change war stance. And he has bent the ear of Trump on a, a number of occasions in the last year. And a lot of people are crediting Tucker Carlson with talking Trump out of escalating this, this conflict. And that's... Who knows why he's doing this? Who, who can figure out what the where this is coming from or why he believes this but we have to you know be thankful that that Trump actually listens to Tucker Carlson and on this specific point Tucker Carlson is right he actually is a voice of reason for whatever reason on this one subject so I don't know yeah Ecotopian Emissary says even a broken clock is right twice a day and, and there you go he's He's wrong on a lot of things, but for whatever crazy reason, he's right on this, and this has kept us out of uh, escalating situations in the Middle East, and who knows why. Thanks for being here, guys. Keep liking the video. We are up. To, uh, we had 101 viewers for a second there, um, so thank you all for being here. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I can't stand Tucker Carlson. Every time I hear him talk, I, I lose my mind. Uh, but for, you know, he has this anti-war stance. I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. <clears throat> but, um, again, even a broken clock can be twi uh, wrong. It <laughs> can be wrong twice a day, right twice a day. Let's move on to another headline, uh, news headline. Bernie Sanders announces bill to block funds for war against Iran. So there has been a pushback from some Democrats, and now it's kind of taken a hold of, you know, most Democrats, that they're going to try and limit Trump's power to conduct military strikes or war without congressional approval, which is already in the Constitution. Uh, this was stripped, or this ability to, to wage war wherever we wanted, whenever we wanted, was actually... Uh, something that was ramped up under the Bush administration was carried on through the Obama administration and is carried on now through the Trump administration. And now people are saying, hey, hold on one second. This is not how it's supposed to work. So Bernie Sanders is a leader 
and trying to restrict the president's power to conduct war. So now this has spread um, the House to hold symbolic vote on stopping Iran war. So there was now, after a day of uncertainty, Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced Wednesday that the House would move forward with a vote on a resolution limiting the president's war powers, which shouldn't actually have to be voted on. It's already in the Constitution. They just have to roll back the the things that have granted the, the president war, you know, this extra war power, um, which is unconstitutional. On Sunday night, House Democrats were resolute that they would vote on the war powers le- legislation this week. By Wednesday morning, however, leadership hadn't scheduled a vote, and there was a talk that the House wouldn't consider the re- resolution until next week. So waffling and hemming and hawing from uh, Democratic leadership, of course. Um but now that Bernie Sanders is, in, you know, one of the leaders in the in the presidential race for the Democrats, and he has already announced a bill, he's, you know, forwarding this idea that maybe the president shouldn't have this power. Now all the Democrats are like, oh, I don't know, maybe we should all, um, yeah, this is a good idea, but we don't really want to commit to this because we're Democrats and we're actually totally with Trump doing all this stuff because if Joe Biden were the president, he would do... He would be doing the exact same thing as Trump. Sorry, guys who think differently, you're wrong. Joe Biden would absolutely be doing the same exact stuff in Iran and Syria. Don't forget Libya. Uh, Don't forget Yemen. (laughs) Places that Obama went into and decided to, you know, muck things up because it's not just it's not just the Democrats uh, for breakfast anymore. It's not just Republicans for regime change war anymore. It's the Democrats. 